You know what's going on, moms. I'm on day three of taking care of kids, running around, doing the chores. I don't always have time to wash my hair. Let's be honest. That's why it's in a lovely bun today. But I don't feel gross. I feel clean. I feel fresh. Why? I use Batiste Instant Refresh. It's a Batiste foam. And um, it's so easy to give your hair an instant refresh. You just put it in. It's waterless cleansing foam. It gently moisturizes normal or dry hair. And it leaves you feeling and smelling fresh in less than 60 seconds. And it's so great. You don't have to use a ton. You just use a little dollop. You massage it in. I massage it in. And then I like to give a little brush, a little brush. And then voila, you're ready to go. Batiste foam to be you is refreshing. Ready in Hamesh, Arba, Shalosh, Stein. Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Yeah! Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at podcast! With Christina P. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, what up, guys? Cool moms. You know who's with me. It's your favorite, Leanne. Cool. Oh, cool moms. Leanne Kreischer's <laughs> in the house. <laughs> whoop, whoop. I'm so glad you're here. Thank I'm so you. glad to be here. Yeah. Don't thank you, you feel like it, the fog is lifting slowly mm-hmm. on this whole thing? Yes. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. I am so tired of my family. No, oh, my really. God. I'm I actually, we're actually having a blast. Um, Doing stuff we never have time to do. That's true. You know? That is the nice part. And yeah. I am like kind of dreading going back on the road now because I only really go out for like 72 hours max. Mm-hmm. But even now I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm <laughs> enjoying so much watching these two little monsters do stuff. You know, Ellis threw an entire uh, bowl of fruit into the pool last week. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he do that? Because he's got ants in his pants. He's four. <laughs> and I've got a two-year-old and they now they're getting into trouble together. Oh. And, it's, and they're bored, you know, they're in the house, man. Uh-huh. But um, they're tag I've been, teaming you. They're tag teaming, and I've been getting into some bad habits. Oh, here it is. Here's a photograph of the, the fruit. Oh, how funny. That's only some of it. I could only, you know, get so much. All of it. Grapefruits, bananas. It was great. Um, well, you know, I've, a boy's got to do what a boy's got to do. A boy's got to, who cares? <laughs> and it's only stuff. It's just fruit. But um, I've, been, uh, I've been drinking a lot. <laughs> Have you? I've been off the rails on a drinking binge it started on saturday i hired a babysitter and tom and i day drank and i was like i'm on vacation i'm drinking and then you know when it just kind of continues and you're like ah sunday night what's a couple more not like a regular mom i'm a cool mom (laughs) (laughs) monday night what's a couple more now i'm like all right it's five days in a row yeah yeah. two glasses a night now it's three glasses a night i should i don't know and then i then i eat you know and i drink what are you doing? Yeah, are you smoking pot? No. Are you doing anything to no. are you white knuckling this? No. I'm exercising. Just, I exercise, but only three days a week. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think there's maybe something wrong with me. <laughs> like I don't have any problems. Like I don't have any anxiety. I go oh. to sleep at night like a dead person. Oh. I don't I don't have a guilty conscience. I don't I don't want to drink I mean, I don't care to drink. I'll drink, but I, I'm not, it's not like I'm going you know, bird at four o'clock's like, okay. Yeah, that's me what these are we days. Doing? Yeah. I am not that way. No so. anxiety. Maybe it's the anxiety. exercise and the, and the proper diet. I hear, like, because I asked Dr. Drew, I'm like, should I drink? Should I smoke pot? What do I do? And he's like, you should run. And I yeah. was like, that sounds like shit. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Pass. Pass. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Bert's right. Maybe I'm just dead inside. <laughs> You're not dead I'm totally inside. dead inside. <laughs> he says that to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He says, you're just dead inside. That's why he nothing just, bothers you. Oh, my God. That's not cool. But that's I not think true. maybe it's because I'm healthy. I don't know. Maybe 20 years of therapy and working out in a balanced diet. Maybe, oh, <laughs> there's something to that. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I'm talking. Yeah. No, listen. <laughs> he has bra- You're in his crazy <laughs> world now. You're in the upside down. You cannot <laughs> adhere to Burt logic. Right? He sucked you in. Don't let that happen. Oh, no Man. worries. I'm dead inside. You're not dead inside. (laughs) You can't affect me. (laughs) You 
are what's known as a healthy person. <laughs> I'm pretty healthy. I'm really healthy. So when he says stuff like that to me, I go, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, good. Okay, that's right. <laughs> no. Because yeah. we're the comedians. We're the ones that are yeah. wackadoo. Yeah. And you're the one that's, from, yeah, you're the normal ish uh, right adjacent uh, ish ish normal yeah. adjacent yeah. yes ish no I, yes. it sounds like <laughs> hold on it sounds like dr drew might be right that <laughs> running or exercise yeah. yeah and good diet yeah makes you not want to drink nightly yeah i don't huh <laughs> well you know what made me not want to drink nightly huh. is dealing with my problems like not that too. Say, like that too. that's what i went you know i was drinking really heavily in my 20s and i went wait a well, minute this is yeah. not making me happy Maybe I should make myself happy and then I won't need to drink. Yeah. And then that worked. That does. So, but I mean, that doesn't apply to everybody, obviously. Boredom is a big reason I think a lot of people are drinking during boredom, this time. It's boredom. just fucking boredom. I, I think it is, as much as I enjoy my kids, um, they, by, by five o'clock, I'm like, mommy needs a drink. Like, especially if I've yeah. been with them all day. Like on Monday, Tom went to go shooting and left me alone with those two little farts for <laughs> hours. And so by five, I was like, who's drinking? Right? Like I, oh, this girl. <gasps> this girl's drinking. This girl. Yeah. And it's only because uh -huh. it literally is every 30 seconds yeah, somebody threw something down the stairwell and as i'm cleaning up the glass down the stairwell the other one's peeing into a trash can and as i'm cleaning up the trash full of piss someone's throwing fruit into the pool it's like yeah it is non-stop so uh -huh. by five i'm like all right i gotta yes. turn this down i gotta turn it off and totally then, and then i laugh then it's easier to laugh when my house is being trashed. Yeah, yeah right? I mean, I'm ah, like, fucking who cares? Fuck it, it's five. You'll be asleep in two hours. Pour me another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that is when I get, uh, anyways. But um, I've been doing that. I've been online shopping. Uh, and I've been buying on Etsy. And I've been buying actual. This necklace. It's from Etsy. Is it? <laughs> Did someone make it or is it yeah. like a vintage? Well, it's Etsy. It's all Etsy crap and I buy it from it's people. It's kind of fabulous. Thank you. It's from some person in Idaho who make, you know, like some lady. In a... This is what she's doing instead of drinking <laughs> during the quarantine. <laughs> is she's making your necklaces. <laughs> yes. And I've been buying actual clothes from the 80s. Like this is called vintage, which is just someone else's disgusting old sweater that I cleaned and I wear in. Yeah, I've been doing that, and I've been I've been buying more wigs, so I've got some more to debut for for you all pretty soon. That's so funny because I saw your bob, yeah, and I was like, "That's a wig." Yeah, of she course. did not do that to of her hair. Not. That's a wig. Of course not. But it's kind of an awesome wig. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, uh, Raquel Welch. I'm giving her a free plug. Actually, makes really good ones. Easy, you just pop them on and go. And um, I've been doing that out of boredom too. Have you have you made any dumb purchases? Oh yeah, on this of oh, quarantine. Oh, anybody who listens to my podcast knows <laughs> that I shop on QVC. Oh what? I didn't know. You this did not know this. I'm a QVC yeah. HSN purchaser Hold person. On. I am. I am. I am. First of all, if you don't know, Leanne's got her own show, Wife of the Party. Yes, Wife of the Party. Yes. <laughs> so okay. But that's like, <laughs> hold on, because Etsy is one of the lowest rungs of online shopping. I feel that like QVC is on par. If uh, not, it's pretty on par. Yeah. But but what's impressive to me about QVC, <laughs> this is what I watch. Not on QVC, but on Home Shopper Network. They'll tell you how many <laughs> items are sold, and it blows my mind. Tell me Where that. I go, that is the ugliest shoe <laughs> I have ever seen in my entire life, and you've sold 50,000. 50,000? 50, and A, 50, I've 000. never seen that shoe on a human in public. <laughs> So who's buying these shoes? Are they people that never leave their home? Yeah. Are they hoarders? Yeah. Are they people? I, I have no idea. But I actually then started going, huh, you know, this is a really good looking palazzo pant. I, I'm a petite. I have Love a hard time it. finding petites. Let me just order free returns. Free, if, free it, shipping. It, you can't beat that. If it's a free return, there's nothing to lose. Let's lose. Yeah. I bought Iman's. You did Palazzo eat. pants. Let's Google Iman's Palazzo pants. And I'm petite. And I have to tell you, they're fantastic. See? They're fantastic. <laughs> they sell Birkenstocks. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold these? on. I bought these. Oh, my God, Leanne. On HSN. I'm a Birkenstock girl. You didn't know that? No, I think I didn't. I think I blocked it out. <gasps> well, let me tell you why I wear Birkenstocks. I have really bad bunions. Oh my, oh my God. From wearing, uh, from wearing heels and from waiting tables. Leanne. And the only thing that gives me relief is a Birkenstock. Leon. Le 
See? I don't even know you anymore. Iman's Palazzo pants? Is that Iman's? Those are see. very nice. They're no, awesome. No, those are nice. I'm wearing Palazzo pants myself today. They're they're high-waisted. They give you the illusion of a slim waist when you don't have one like in my case. And then they flare out, a flared leg. Now, hold on. And they come in a two-pack. I, I, I got a... <laughs> because you know if you're gonna buy one don't you need two i kind of agree with you i buy stuff in twos all the time totally because when you like it you may as well just get another one hey another color yeah so hold on though i i I gotta tell you to me the birkenstock personally i get afraid when i see a woman in a birkenstock i go this is the last stop (laughs) On the menopause highway. Oh, God, is this, are you going to cut your hair off now? Are you getting a short Honey, haircut? Honey, I've been wearing Birkenstocks forever. Okay. You know, my mom bought me Birkenstocks when I was a child. So, God, she started. seriously, child. when I started having really, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if you have bunions. I they don't. They are very painful. And what they is hurt a bunion all the, exactly? It is, um, I'll show you. It's on, is on the corner of your toe. I don't know toe. if you can see it on my, on the Look camera. Look at the, put those away from me. But, see oh this right here? Oh, my God. This no, bump okay. right here? Can you get it fixed? It's You've got a, lovely feet. It's a very serious surgery and it is a long recovery. So if I wear these oh God, for I'm one throw. day, <laughs> I'm feeling I nauseous. Have so I have the, it stops hurting. Oh my God. I freaking love my Birkenstocks. <laughs> I know you do. Can we bedazzle them? Can I yeah. at least put some shine? I used to have studs on them, but yeah, I just I like got that. these from HSN last week. <laughs> I haven't had time to bedazzle them. Yes, the HSN has great prices and all types of floral prints and colors that you can't find anywhere except on HSN. <laughs> and I love to watch the hosts there. They just feel who's like your, they're in your living who's room. Who's your favorite? Google HSN. I love David on QVC. I love David. And then there's this guy, this woman <laughs> called the Zhuzh List. Is it Z-S-Z-H? I can never remember her name. But Click on the H- list. and show host. No, it's QVC. David's on oh. QVC. I love David. Oh, I'm sorry. He's on. He's exclusive. And, well, well, HSN is in Tampa and QVC is in Philly. So they're totally That's different. Totally like, different. People. Yes. East Coast versus, where was the other one? Tampa. Oh, Tampa. Yeah. Florida versus is different. the armpit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so is that him? No. Who's His this His name's guy? David. Look, they all look like they're wearing Raquel Welch wigs, by the way. I think Raquel Welch sells her wigs on QVC. <laughs> Yes, they sell a lot of wigs on QVC. Full circle, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, here's your host. David, right there in the blue shirt with the apron on. He's the sweetest fella, and he just cooks stuff, and he shows you about all these gadgets in the kitchen, (laughs) and then you watch how many are sold, and you go, are you fucking kidding me? How do you sell that much stuff? Now, do you think they're inflating their numbers? No. Do you think they could be lying, that 50,000 women did not, in fact, buy that Birkenstock? I don't day? think so. Well, that 50,000 women did not buy a Birkenstock, but they're, yeah. that wasn't the ugly shoe I was referring to. Well, I, I don't is. feel these are ugly. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got it. Can I, may I suggest, okay. Okay. I, I will not, I, I will, here's the deal. I get <laughs> it. I get it. We, we have children. Your feet get all messed up. Mm-hmm. Your, your back gets fucked up. Google, please, Vionics, V-I-O-N-I-C. Oh, those are ugly as dirt. Those are ugly as shit. Yeah. But they sell those on QVC also. I bet. (laughs) And Clark's. Clark's is the death. (laughs) I think the end of the road is, um, what are those smelly rubber ones? Fit flops? No, no, no. The smelly Crocs. Oh, Crocs. That's the end of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right before you sew your vagina shut that's for gardening yeah women who garden a lot oh, i garden a lot but i don't wear crocs no crocs are the end of the road for your sexuality i mean look the vionic cassie you wouldn't you wouldn't no, wear no, no, the no. cassie no what I, about the tide too <laughs> no i don't like the mephistos either i'm i'm a birkenstock only for orthopedic shoe type people yeah i like where, i like a good orthopedic shoe around the house as well too i even do the vionic sneaker from time to time oh yeah i do yeah i do i like a good support i can't do heels i've never been good at heels i feel mm-hmm. like i just i don't know how to walk in them i, yeah. I wish i could because they're so beautiful yeah they are but i'm they're torture i just i don't feel good wearing them. i can't do it lady soon. stuff well I, I really didn't know this about you but <laughs> Can we still be friends? For sure. For (laughs) sure. But maybe we could go shopping together one time and we could exchange tips. Totally. (laughs) I have other great shoes. I just happen to love my Birkenstocks. I hear you. 
They're my like around the house everyday shoes or if my feet are hurting. Yeah. So like when I work out, sometimes we do a lot of stuff on my tippy toes. Like where you have to point, where you have to, like today we were doing down dog, but on your tippy toes. Oh my God. So when that's over, like an hour later after I've done that for several times, my bunions hurt. So if I wear my Birkenstocks the rest of the day, it stops hurting. Gotcha. If I don't, they'll still hurt tomorrow yeah and the next day so it's really weird i don't know why this particular shoe does that but it does for me it helps yeah it helps so it's worth it <sighs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but isla and i were watching hsn late night yeah and what happens Isla's my little partner in crime there yeah. she's like let's put on the shopping channels 240 <laughs> and 275 let's do it so we'll put them on and they were selling they were selling, they were <laughs> selling rose bushes <laughs> but really we Real bought ones? two rose bushes. <laughs> yes, <we did. laughs> and I don't know why, because they come as like this stick thing that you have to plant. Yeah, it's, it sounds like, like a nightmare. Now you've got to do more. Yeah. Like it doesn't it's make really your life. really stupid. Yeah, it's like not making your life easy at no, all. Yeah. It's a job. It shows up and goes, here's a job. Ugh, it's the worst. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so stupid. That was my Fuck. stupidest purchase. That, that, yeah, that one's a rose bush. I have never, <laughs> I didn't know you could buy one on television. Vision. You can buy it's, buy, it's the same as the Palazzo pants. The Palazzo pants, I get. They, no, 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 they, get you buy, you buy one, you get one. You get, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's the, a two pack. The BOGO. <laughs> it's a two pack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been buying um, women's supportive underwear, like mom underwear. Supportive? What like, does that mean? Like, like Google as a girdle? Mother Tucker. They're like mom. Mother Tucker? Yeah, I'm really into these. Again, they do not, they don't sponsor the show. Mother Tucker underwear underwear sorry and um i get them at nordy's and they come in a two-pack there you go oh my they've God. got the tummy panel <laughs> they're enormous there you go the belly yeah do you wear those no no the ones on okay. the left go to the nude pair okay those that's are not what bad. i wear those and are it's bad. perfect because it tucks nicely and like i just love them i'm really into it i don't like my belly fat hanging over my chonies i think mine would still hang over that <laughs> I, I i hold my really fat high. try those those are good okay yeah. I'll check them out. If you check out some Birkenstocks. No, no. <laughs> you no. buy me some panties and I'll buy you some Birkenstocks. <laughs> I, I think I went blind. The very suggestion. <laughs> I'll tell you why, though. And I think it's only because of my goth roots mm. that I'm so opposed to Birkenstocks culturally mm. as, a, as a recovering goth girl. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're too hippie adjacent for me. Uh-huh. If we could goth them up or make them cooler... Well, According I have some me. that have black cork on the bottom and black <laughs> leather on top. So they're all black Burks. But uh, there is a little metallic know. in them, though. Okay. I, don't <laughs> know. I gotta go. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Leanne. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed her because she won't be back. <laughs> uh, so also, I wanted to talk about, so what are we watching? What's your quarantine? But wait, I didn't find out what sure. you bought that was stupid. Oh, so, uh, all of it every day. 80s outfits oh, I've been right. buying. Etsy. I bought a dog. You bought a dog? No, no, a dog zip oh. up. Old 80s jacket. I'm having it dry clean because it smelled pretty gnarly, oh. you know? Um, wigs. I've just bought a, a, a Rene of Paris. That's the brand. A rainbow <laughs> bob. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It's mostly wigs is where my, my wacky. And I like, I just got into it during this quarantine. How fun. Uh, yeah. I was like, I've always wanted to get into them. And I'm like, oh, now's the time. I got nothing. Where to... do you put them when you're not wearing them? Good question. <laughs> you put one on Ellis. Good Let question. Them around they hate fruit. it. They fucking hate it. Yeah. I have uh, styrofoam heads that you I got on Amazon. And you I got kinda... for reals. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> fucking crazy. <man. laughs> the older I get, the more I'm like, you know what? You only live once. I'm going to start oh, wearing and doing wacky fucking shit. Like, Why not? I'm going to put a brick in this bitch because I might die sooner than later because right. I'm middle-aged. Yeah. You know? So I have a carpe diem kind of thing going on. I like it. Yeah, that and I got into Gibraltar's uh, oh, yeah? from Alfred Coffee. That's two shots of espresso. Ooh la la. Maybe that's more. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> I got to get some wigs. Yeah. <laughs> I need some wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Freak it out, man. <laughs> Uh, so there <laughs> so uh we both watched unorthodox yes i like that one if you guys haven't seen that one on netflix it's only four episodes yeah which kind of bummed me out because i want to see what happens but it's about this woman who lives in greenpoint brooklyn who was raised as an orthodox jew and you don't realize that that shit happens in fucking williamsburg mm -hmm. this culture that's completely just outside of normal society like yeah. they don't even educate their people girls. their girls the boys can read the torah and that's about it right 
I don't know. I don't know about the boys. I know they do. They they you know are the ones that have businesses, so they must be educated in, on some level. Yeah, some um, level. But the girls definitely not. Um, it's just they're just breeding. All they do is make the girls breed. They're breeders. Yeah. It was really. Uh, I kind of knew a little bit about that culture because I was a landlord, <laughs> and the only acceptable um, non-Jewish person that a, a Hasidic Jew can talk to is a landlord. So oh. I can legitimately talk to them. So they didn't like keep their eyes cast down or oh. or avoid me because I was in some kind of legitimate job. Right. Um, so I had several residents in the apartment that were Orthodox. Because um, you at the time, yeah, that's near you near the Hasidic highway is what they call it. Yes, that's here right. On, uh, um, near six. Rabbi right? Row is yeah. what they call it. <laughs> they call it Rabbi Row. Yeah. So I had three families that lived in my. I had thirty nine unit apartment building. I managed. And I, you know, would have to do random inspections and I'd see how they lived and who did what and, you know, can't use keys on the weekend, can't, they couldn't adjust their thermostat. I'd have to come in and adjust their thermostat for them. if they, On Sabbath? And then they couldn't tell me what was wrong. They'd just have to say, had a hard time sleeping last night because the comforter was too heavy and I'd have to go, they're hot. So I had to turn their AC down. You know, they're they just on the Sabbath or yeah, in general, just on the Sabbath. They couldn't tell, Nadav, me. tell her what's going on. What's going on? Yeah, they're the worst. It's, well, uh, it's uh, uh, they can't do work um, from they can't do work from Friday evening to Saturday evening. So what they do is they employ something called the Shabbos Goy or get someone for free, like their landlord, <laughs> to turn light switches on, mm -hmm. to turn uh, the, the gas range on, on their stove. Um, literally anything that requires any work, they try and get a non-Jew to do it for them in that 24-hour <laughs> period. But my, you, you got roped in, man, to I some Shabbos them. shit. I, I, free labor. Yeah, good Shabbos. That's what they said on the show, good Shabbos. But my question is, where is that in the Bible? I don't know. The first uh, five books, man. Don't work on uh, don't work on the Sabbath. When they interpret yeah, but, it literally, but doing the work. this flip of a light switch is work. Yeah, because it creates. It, oh my god, I hate how much I know about this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it creates work for someone, and you can't be the someone that that creates something that that is work. But hold on, but wouldn't having the goyim come in and do the job? create work yeah. for me no yeah none of it makes sense but to them it's a valid loophole which is very stupid but i'm evil anyway because i'm not jewish <laughs> so for them they're like fuck her it doesn't matter do right? they think that though the, did that those orthodox think that if you're not orthodox Jew, you're going to hell i, think that's uh, I don't, I don't think, believe in hell i don't think we believe in hell no not, hold on. what not we, not we. Uh, i don't think they believe in hell. hold on <laughs> no, the jews don't believe in hell no mm -hmm. what happens when you die and you're a shit bag I don't know what happens when you die, but I know they don't believe in hell. Wait, wait. But let's say you're a rapist, baby raper. What happens to you? You have to wear that furry hat for eternity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's hot as fuck yeah, in the middle of summer. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens to bad people, Nadav? Does God... I think it's like uh, what it is is that it's like there, there's an afterlife and then there's paradise, you know? So it's like okay. you either go to the afterlife that's kind of whatever. It's just the thing that's afterlife. It's purgatory. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Or you go somewhere that's awesome. And oh, that's what wow. motivates people to not be complete douchebags. So why didn't they just come up with hell? I know. Hell sounds like real good motivator. You I know, mean, it works for us. Well, Satan's in the Old Testament, right? No. No, he's not to the New Testament? No. That's a, isn't that the New Testament, Satan? No. We, oh. uh, you guys no, no, have no, the we devil? Don't, no, we don't have the devil. No, that's New Testament yeah. shit. Uh, that's that's that how the Christians new. got fucked up. Yeah. You, we have burning bushes and stuff in the in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. God talks to you and does supernatural things, but mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, not Satan. No, he, Satan. he does magic tricks. <laughs> he was he was the sequel. He <laughs> <laughs> was a part two. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I I really got into that story. Mm, I really I really wanted her to be free, Esty. That mm -hmm. was the thing. And You've heard of these different subscription boxes that they get delivered to your door and they have these wonderful products. Why not choose Causebox? It's a box of wonderful, glamorous products for women, but each of them helps a different cause in the world. So you're not just, you know, doing something selfish or helping other people. Each box is filled with $250 worth of products for less than $50. 
I love PMD Clean. This came in my last cause box. It's a smart facial cleansing tool, and I've always wanted to try it because they look so fancy. Uh, they, okay, it says here, 7,000 vibrations per minute. Bzz, you put it on, it deeply cleanses your face, it lifts, it tones. I mean, look at this. It normally costs $99 by itself, and it's just one of a bunch of great products in the summer cause box that I got. It was fantastic. The summer box is almost sold out. So of course, my listeners, you get an exclusive discount. All you have to do is go to causebox.com slash WMMA and use code WMMA to get your first box for 30% off. As in, you can get your first box worth over $250 plus for less than $39 and free shipping. So don't wait. Go to cause box right now i can tell you firsthand you're going to love it thank you cause box i love adam and eve let me tell you something i've been with the same dude for 15 years and adam and eve is part of our lives and that's why we've been together man you gotta go to adam and eve they got toys for men toys for women couples toys every kind of lube and lotion lingerie and so many other sexy gifts go to adam and eve you got to spice things up you got to keep the relationship fresh you can get toys sometimes i get stuff for for tommy if he's going on the road i'm not going to tell you what that's personal that is private but i get him little things and it's very exciting you got to spice things up in the bedroom and i know you're thinking but what will the neighbors think i can't shop at adamandeve.com they'll know that i'm buying naughty things it comes in an, in a discreet box nobody will even know so Here's what you're going to do. Uh, you're going to take advantage of this downtime we're in and choose almost any one item and get 50% off at adamandeve.com with code WMMA. And when you do, you'll also get 10 free gifts, including six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus kit, and best of all, free shipping delivered discreetly right to your door. Go to adamandeve.com and use offer code WMMA to get 50% off just about any item plus 10 free gifts. Use code WMMA at checkout. Thank you, adamandeve.com. So anyway, if you're looking for a good one, that and then you've been watching The Gypsies, my big yes. fat gypsy wedding, which I was, I'm a huge fan of that show. I yeah. stopped watching it a while back, but I like it. My kids love it. <laughs> they have to see the dress. They cannot wait to see these what? dresses. The dresses are just ridiculous. We looked up how much they cost, and yes, I think they're me. like between, I think it said between eight and twenty thousand dollars <laughs> for the dresses, and they look literally like like a cartoon character almost. Yeah. Like there's no person that wears this dress ever. Google gypsy the, dresses. Uh, <clears throat> gypsy, gypsy wedding, wedding dress. dress. It's uh, very they specific. Make these dresses for other gypsy ceremonies also. I mean, <laughs> they all have to be really flashy. They need yeah. to have a lot of bling. That's that word is they used a lot. Bling, yeah. I need more bling. No, but they say bling. like this. They go, I want my drink, my dress gonna be the blingiest dress. I'm gonna have Swarovski crystals on it, and I'm gonna be the blingiest bride there is at the gypsy yeah. wedding. And ain't no gorger gonna outgorger me or whatever. Fucking dumb. They're so dumb. And if my sister shows up at my wedding, that's yeah. gonna be a problem. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna be a problem. <laughs> they start fronting with me, and they will be fist flying. That's yeah. what they say. They it's love like, it. what? <laughs> they get so a gypsy yeah. is much like the Orthodox. They got a wacky thing going too. Yeah. So it's... they set up the gypsy girls by 15 years old, that's right? right. Mm -hmm. And then by 16, you're fucking married. You live in your own trailer. You're uneducated. You're cleaning the trailer for a living, and you're pumping out other gypsies. And by the time you're 25, you look about 55 because you have poor diet, no dental care. These poor girls are just effed. And the highlight of their life is this wedding. Yeah. The highlight of their existence is to put on a pretty dress. And for one day, they're the print, the bail of the ball. I'm the princess of the fucking trailer park. Yep. It is the best. It is the best. And I got to I got to get back into this show. It was pretty good. I mean, we watch it pretty regularly. Yeah. Every couple of days, we yeah. watch several episodes of this. Yeah, it's really, um, it's really a crazy culture. It's very similar. It if you lay out the kind of what you just laid out, they yeah. don't really educate their girls. No, the women have very specific roles in this society that they live in. They clean. They're supposed to have an immaculate house, take care of their man. Take. They have no voice. 
no say in what happens in their family. <laughs> There's a definite hierarchy of women, and it's just bizarre. I know. Same with the, the I was watching a documentary on um, polygamy. Mm -hmm. There's one on Netflix, and Tom and I were like, oh, it's going to be good. Like, here <laughs> comes sexy, sexy, and it's not. No. Because it's the same system. It's like a one dude gets to have, you know, multiple wives. And guess what? They all cater to him. It's mm. totally set up by a dude. Patriarchy. Yeah, who benefits. It's like, what the fuck? So anyway, apropos this discussion, I was listening to Dr. Laura Schlesinger's book, Their Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands, when I was walking around my neighborhood because I was like, well, I remember Dr. Laura. Um, you know, I don't agree with everything she says. She's anti-gay. Um, she's... <laughs> She's a fucking wackadoo, but some of the stuff she says is, is great. And I believe I like how she talks about women being nice to their husbands and caring for the home and taking pride in that. Because I do think at least the current culture, like, I don't know, it's kind of starting to celebrate the woman's role in the house and like what we do. And, but also there's a pressure to be more than that and mm -hmm. to be, to be both male and female role. Anyway, the point is. There was no good old days, I think, when it came to women being in the house and taking care of the home and everything, because women couldn't have a bank account in the 1950s. That's right. Like, yeah, we were kind of cared for that way, and that was awesome, but like, yeah, you couldn't vote. You didn't have a voice. <laughs> you couldn't do shit. Well, you could vote in the 50s, but... Oh, we could? Yeah. Could we vote in the 50s? When do we... Yeah? Yeah, we Before could Before black 50s. people? When did, when did black people... Get? Well, 60s? suffrage, it was in the 20s, right? Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. We but, um... But, um, yeah, there was no, the men made all the decisions. And I definitely, we're not that way now. I mean, most decisions are made in a couple together. Right. But, um, but yeah, it's a weird, I was just talking to somebody at my house the other day about this, how they feel like um, the roles have changed, but they haven't. You know, in quarantine, it's kind of, uh, the person I was talking to works a full-time job, as does her husband, and they have a nanny who takes care of their two-year-old. And now that there's quarantine, there's no nanny, and they're both home together, and mom works her full-time job and is a full-time mom oh and dad is pretty much like yeah i gotta work and she's like M i gotta work too yeah there's no sh there's no um awareness from him that this should be shared like <laughs> that's just what the woman does right you're the mom yeah and he wants you so then he because he wants his mommy yeah. and you're gonna cook him dinner right you're gonna cook breakfast right you're gonna cook lunch right yeah. and still work your job where she makes more money than he does. And she's like, she came over and was like, what the yeah. fuck? I mean, you would <laughs> think we would have advanced past this as no. a species. No. But everything kind of resets back to factory settings. You know, we're like, yeah. mom's in charge of actually everything. <laughs> and dad just makes the money, you know? And yeah. when in this case, she's like, dad's making money, but mom's making more money than dad. So, so, so mom's got to readjust the... She's trying to, and yeah, it's not it's really tough. working because I don't think, um, maybe this is an ignorant statement, but I don't think most men are wired to think about the overall picture in the house where we've yeah. had generation, generation, decade, decade, decades of being the person who took care of the house and then added a new role to it, whereas men was, were never the person that took care of the house. That's true. So that's true i think it's been really hard for her she was like this quarantine has got to be over because <laughs> i can't get my work do done it. i'm so stressed out she said the same thing by five o'clock she's drinking yeah and she's like i'm not even a drinker i know well i think yeah because nannies are like the outsourcing so the issue gets pushed to the nanny which is great because then you can just go yeah shit ain't equal in our house but we've outsourced the problem, therefore mm -hmm. it's not a problem anymore. Problem mm -hmm. solved. All this extra income goes to that, and now that's there. But when that's removed, mm -hmm. I know because I think about it with my husband and I as well. And like I, mm, the truth is too, our little boys don't want Tom. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's her point. <laughs> they they want, fucking he don't wants mommy. Care like <laughs> in the mornings, it's my name. Yeah, that gets called, and I'll be like, let's go say good morning to daddy, and they're like, no, and they mm. just don't care. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And there's some honor in that role. Like I secretly love it because mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about you. Let's go. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then you go like, okay, is that because I've been the one that's tended to their needs primarily since the beginning? But I think there's something developmental too with little boys going on that it's mom they're yeah. connecting to me i think not it's him. not just boys right now yeah because my girls, girls wanted too? me yeah they everybody wants their mommy at yeah. a certain age so i think that is a gift for us 
But, you know, everything is a double-sided coin, almost yeah. everything in life. So part of that is sometimes you're really overwhelmed and because you got to do everything. Yeah. So every, everything. <laughs> I know, and I wonder what how society because I do think now with this whole the idea that gender is really fluid and that it's it's society based mm -hmm. that how the roles will change between men and women and how your daughters will experience motherhood might be completely different than how we experience it because we also forget like our mothers were the first of the working mom essentially yeah. the working single mother it was the 80s the liberated yeah so women yeah we mm -hmm. are the result of like our moms were the first ones to be in the workforce and now we're the the second layer and then by the time the third generation goes to it maybe it'll be a lot more equal because you're right men don't know i don't think my hu my husband grew up in a very traditional house mm -hmm. mom was inside dad was outside of the house his mom was a stay-at-home mom so i really don't think he knows <laughs> what goes into right it. <laughs> well the question to me that what you were talking about is what does this next generation hold with society kind of deciding what the roles are but how much of this is nature i don't know that's the big question isn't it yeah because that's the big debate if a baby who has no idea what's going on in society just goes i want her because she has milk in those boobs yeah then that's mommy you know right. daddy don't have milk nowhere so I can't imagine, I, I, well, I would imagine that that is a biological piece. Mm -hmm. That's just nature. I mean. Unless you have a breast pump, a tit pump <laughs> that we had for Josh Potter on your mom's house. Did you know if you saw that? I did not. <laughs> there are machines that you can buy, men can buy to make their tits grow, but we're not going to do that on the show. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but you're right. So maybe there is something to those first few months or a year or whatever, two years that women breastfeed that you are creating this exclusive bond with this child that is irreplaceable and that is preferable to them right well even on. if you're not breastfeeding you know well, you're a the... dog has a puppy the puppy just knows to find the boob yeah you know who's got the boob and i think a baby is probably the same even if it's the bottle you well, know yeah and knows mom's smell and, and mom's mom, body exactly. and dna and some that. kind of instinct well, speaking of gender, I have um, a TikTok I'd like to show you. I just wanted you to feel in the loop, like talking about this generation um, and how they're changing gender. So go ahead. Let's uh, play this for Leanne. Hey, so there's something I want to talk about relatively quickly before I dive into a bunch of videos and education. So I am non-binary, but I am also trans mask. What that means for me is that I'm not a trans man. I am not a man, but my identity is centered around a masculine set of traits. I love my beard. I love having a flat chest and I really be, like being perceived as somebody who's masculine, but I'm not a man and I'm not a woman. So I'm a non-binary and that's how I perceive and feel my gender identity. I have been using testosterone to medically transition for about five years at a lower dose. Um, and that's what's made my body into the way that it's supposed to be today. There are so many other non-binary identities and I can't wait to share them all with you. I'm so confused. <laughs> what part don't you get? Well, I want to say bless her heart, <laughs> but I don't know. I think that's inappropriate and insensitive. Yeah. So bless their they the, them the, they them's heart bless <laughs> their heart i mean a is pretty brave yes that's really brave and you have to applaud that but i'm i feel really dumb yeah that's why i wanted to show it to you because it's not so much <laughs> making like it's not about them it's really about us being like what the fuck did i just see yeah, i don't I, understand I'm this. so confused <laughs> i feel really I feel really a need to be <laughs> respectful of that person. Of course. But I, uh, but she's a beautiful, uh, well, God see. God damn it. I see. I feel bad. This person clearly has a beautiful, positive soul. Absolutely. I, j but I would be so nervous to talk to this person because I would be afraid I would say the wrong pronoun <laughs> and do it completely just because I don't know what pronoun to use. <laughs> what is the pronoun for non-binary? No, 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 seriously. What is the pronoun for non-binary? You have to ask them. They tell you their pronouns. Oh. So you would say, oh, you're non-binary. What pronouns would you like me to use? Oh, you say that now? Yeah, you have to ask. What, unless they wear like a 
pin. I've seen pins where people are really? like, I, they, them, he, she. Wait, no, play the other one. They have if a you, pin? Listen, maybe we'll shed some light. On, let, let's clarify. Can you show Leanne the second video? Go ahead. Hey, so a friend during our Zoom call posed a really great question, and I kind of wanted to talk about it here. Um, my friend asked, can you be transgender and non-binary, or do you have to be one or the other? And I thought that was a really great question for people who may not know. I myself am transgender and non-binary. For me, that means I transitioned out of what society deemed me at birth. I use hormones and have had top surgery. So my identity stems as being both trans and non-binary because I'm not a man, but I'm still transitioning away from being a woman. Um, I know non-binary folks who identify as non-binary and trans, and I know folks who are non-binary that don't identify as trans. Oh, yeah. Um, I really think it's how you perceive oh, your gender. For, all right, stop. I, I can't. I, it's an algebra equation. Like if X is the root of pi and the two X minus the X. You need a sextant to figure this out. <laughs> Like a, a for sailing. I don't, I'm so confused because those two things are in conflict. If you're non binary and transgender, see, yeah. the we fella should... in your control room just explained non binary to me. I didn't just understood that like five minutes ago. We need I'm a so bad. Called I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> We're like, or maybe I'm too dumb. Maybe no. it makes me feel really. Zolo, if, tell us in millennial speak what the fuck this person's talking about. Well, it makes me feel irresponsible as a person. I'm trying to understand, too, because I don't want to be one of those people in the 60s who are like, why can't I say the N-word? Like, you should yes, know yes, that. Yes, exactly. That's the exactly. I don't want to be on the wrong side of history, so no. I'm trying to understand this shit. Okay, you know, that next segment, new segment, explain this shit, millennial. Because, okay, millennial, explain this shit. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Because, <sighs> I mean... Uh, I'm not really sure co either. I, I have no clue. Oh, fuck off. You explained non-binary before. I, we I, know, what nine, I know what non-binary is, but I, I don't know what they're doing. Okay, what is non-binary? Start there. She's a hybrid. She's that a non... They. Oh, sorry. <sighs> sorry. I'm so meant, I, did, I am, clearly. Okay, go ahead. But so, they, their voice is dropping. Non-binary <laughs> just means they don't identify as male or female. Okay. They're a third option. Okay. See, that makes, that's intuitive. Now, in India, they have a class, a cast of people that are this third sex. It's called, right? The third sex. No clue. And these are people that are generally, I think, they have both genitals, like hermaphrodites. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's like a place for them in society. Mm -hmm. Is uh, that common in India? I don't think it's co it, it, it exists. I don't know how common it is. But mm -hmm. yeah, they can, I don't think they have a great life or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But they there is a place for them in the world. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, fascinating, uh, fascinating <laughs> shit. Um, it is really fascinating. It's, it uh, is interesting. I've, I'm a curious person by nature. Same. I feel like things change so quickly. I think that's why I haven't learned as much as I probably could or should have about what's going on in society in that sect because I it changes like overnight. All of yeah. a sudden there's a new term that I don't understand and a new term. So I think maybe subconsciously I'm waiting for it to kind of settle. It's settling. I'll tell you what it, I think it is going on now that I've kind of had a minute with it. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the feminization of society, right? Okay. Patriarchy was the past. Mm -hmm. This new era is the feminine is now is now emerging, right? Mm -hmm. It's becoming the dominant. The feelings are taking priority over logic. <laughs> and now gender is coming under question. It's the feminization of constructs like gender and stuff so you're right the pendulum is now on the female side mm -hmm. and eventually it'll go back down right it starts with david bowie wearing makeup and women's clothing <laughs> it goes into prince being a feminine rock star you oh, know yeah uh, whatever it's the feminization and it's exciting and let's see where it goes in in a yeah in a generation from now who knows um how this is going to shake out it's pretty exciting uh okay kat von d are you familiar with kat von d mm -hmm. Um, I follow her on the gram and, um, oh, is it, do you have the video? Oh, good. I'm so happy. Okay. Uh, this is Kat Von D with her cute little son, Leia, Leia Farr, playing in the background there. And, um, I think he's almost one. He had one. Wait, what is going on with this diaper? Who did this to you? <laughs> Could it have been your papa? That definitely wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Leia Farr, a ver, muéstrame tu, tu pañal. 
Wow. <laughs> Tu pañal. So cute. Wow. The cloth diapers never looked so good. <laughs> cloth diapers. So, number one, even Kat Von D, who I imagine is probably in a pretty woke relationship even she is like oh the diaper's on wrong it's probably dad that fucking did that <laughs> that was a backhanded like oh dad fucked you <gasps> yeah and then cloth diaper yeah. like wow do you know anybody that went uh, yeah. who my cousin who lives in san francisco yeah uh that sounds about right. cloth diaper yeah it's um i, I highly doubt she's listening to this but it's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she puts it in the toilet. Oh, shut the to, fuck like, up. To like get the shit out of it and then puts it in a pail and then washes it in the fucking washing machine. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, dude. Are you fucking I'm like, joking? Check, please. Come on. She puts it in the washing machine? Yeah, with bleach. Ugh. But she gets the no, shit off I, of it in the toilet yeah. first. Yeah, but everybody who has babies knows that the, the brown doesn't come out oh, solid. No. It's mush. Mm hmm. It's like baby food. Yeah. Just like, especially if they did it in the car seat. Oh, forget it. Forget it. It's yeah. all over everything. And yeah. it smells horrible. Terrible, yep. Dude. Yeah. She's, yeah. Brew. Cloth diapers. Brew. So you're telling me that Kat Von D probably dumps the mush and then Do puts you think it, Kat Von D dumps the mush? She does. The, the nanny. No. Yeah, care. no. She does it. <laughs> and even like, okay, best case scenario with a cloth diaper. Moms, email me if you use cloth diapers and they work for you. Tell me how the heck you're doing it because I'm trying to think, oh, where my mom's at at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail, 213-375-5184 or send me a video, better. Send me a fucking video. How do you clean your cloth diapers? How are you doing this? Because, okay, here's best case scenario with a cloth diaper. You're changing the baby. It smells, you know how bad baby shit smells, mm -hmm. dude. And you put it, what, in a bag? And then maybe you send out this bag of filthy garments to be laundered. Like maybe there's a baby cloth diaper service. Maybe. And they launder all of them and then give them back to you. And sounds, then, sounds, sounds like a shit show. Sounds, sounds just terrible. Terrible. It does because she had like a, like a garbage pail with a lid. Right. So that it didn't smell. Okay. Um, it didn't and really it didn't? smell. No, not really. But there, I mean... I personally don't want to stick my hand in the toilet no. to get the shit off. I mean, I don't want no. to do that. So no. I can't imagine a lot of people do, but but what else do they do? Wow, Just put the whole God. like uh, full diaper into some pail and Dude. send it out for laundry? I, I don't know. know. But what the heck did they the women do in like, um, you know, for my dad, like my grandmother probably used, there was no disposable diaper in no. Hungary, in Budapest in 1948. Oh, my mom used cloth diapers on me. The, 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 the pampers or whatever, that kind of disposable diaper just showed up in the 70s. Oh my God. So yeah, they were, we were, you may have been, well, you're younger than me. 76 I was born. Yeah, you're so, younger than me. They were full fledged by then, I'm sure. I'm 1970. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, maybe they just came about. Dude, they, they didn't hadn't. even have fucking ultrasounds when you and I were. No. I mean, we could have come out with five heads. Oh, totally. Oh, my sister-in-law is pregnant now. And she's she was like, did you have she this such is? and such? Yeah, she Got is. It. Dude, October. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, congrats. Having a girl. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Exciting. She gets one of each. One of each. Dope. Two and done. Nice. But um, she was like, did you have this test and that test? And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> we didn't know. have anything. Well, this test tells you if they have any kind of learning disability. Or yeah. Anything. I was like, no, I didn't have anything can, like that. No. Well, when I had my last baby, they're like, the next in the next year or two, we can test for autism pretty soon. Oh, wow. I was like, it's fucking. Crazy. Yeah. They're like, does your baby have a hangnail? Do you want to abort it? Right. Like, yeah, dude. Fuck that hangnail. Your, your kid is going to grow up and really want to get into magic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm out. I'm Medium. out. I'm out. No, they're gonna wear Birkenstocks and shrunk on HS. Wow. She'll be dead inside. Yeah. No, totally you're dead. not dead. You're like the happiest, best person. He's dead. In, he's projecting. He's not Pro dead inside. Believe me. No, no, no. He's very much alive. You know, it's been more than 75 years since many courageous soldiers, maybe even your grandfather, left home to fight for the highest possible purpose. ExploreAncestry.com's new collection of untold stories from World War II. Then find and honor the veterans in your family who served. 
You may be familiar with the major events and battles of World War II, but there are so many other stories to uncover. The skill and bravery of the Tuskegee Airmen and all African-American squad or fighter pilots. Did you know the incredible women who trained to become pilots and mechanics? The Japanese-American battalion that became one of America's most decorated units despite discrimination against Japanese-Americans at that time. Find and honor your ancestors who served in World War II and get a new take on your ancestors' World War II experience. Discover the untold stories of the men and women who faced World War II with dignity and courage. Find the veterans in your family who rose to the occasion when the world needed them the most. Discover your untold stories and more. Head to Ancestry.com slash WMMA to start discovering your story today. That's Ancestry.com slash WMMA. Fair Harbor has replaced all mesh lining with their super soft built-in boxer brief liner, and it is softer than anything you've ever felt before. From swimming to exercising, lounging, and even sleeping, you won't take these shorts off. I know because I got the boys in my family, two little boys and my husband, Fair Harbor swim trunks and lounging shorts, and they absolutely love them. And I love this company too because Fair Harbor shorts are made from recycled plastic bottles. How cool is that? To date, Fair Harbor has recycled over 2.5 million plastic bottles, keeping plastic out of waterways and off of beaches. Awesome. They are also offering a kid's line so the younger guys can say goodbye to mesh lining now too. Fair Harbor products make products for you to enjoy the places you love while protecting those places at the same time. Here's what you're going to do. 20% off for everyone listening now. Head over to fairharborclothing.com and use the code MOM20 for 20% off. That's MOM20 and say goodbye to mesh lining forever. Um, and last week I played a clip of uh, me singing good morning to my son Ellis. Mm. And I just, uh, well, first, here's part two of that. I started singing to him on Monday. This is us laying on the couch, just hanging out together. And let's see how he liked it, just in the middle of the day singing. <laughs> I love you, Ellis. You're my firstborn son. I carried you inside me. Nine whole months. You destroyed my body, but. <laughs> I love you. You're no more thing in his house. No more thing in his house. Wonderful to me. You're so smart. And <laughs> handsome and kind. <laughs> and I love you. Oh, we can get the picture. So there's. I love you so much. He hates me so much. <laughs> Knock it off. He's so mad. All right, that's hysterical. That's great. Yeah. So I posted the first one on the Grum, and Bert sent me one of you. I know, yeah. So uh-huh. set this clip up a bit. This is you with Isla. You're trying to wake Isla. Isla is <laughs> it's impossible to wake up. Like yeah. I'm like, you need to be up by ten, ten thirty maybe, because her first class online is at eleven. I'm like, give you go take a piss, go brush your teeth, get something to eat. She cannot get up. She sets an Alexa alarm every 15 minutes and the alarm will go off and then time out before the next one. So then she found this app online called the Screaming Baby Goat Alarm. It is the worst sound ever. It's like baby goats screaming. That's terrible. Still doesn't wake her up. Oh my God. So I've had the hardest time waking her up. I don't know how she got up at six every day to go to school, but suddenly now that she goes past this threshold and she's done. So... I have her whole life sang to her to wake her up, and she has her whole life hated it, much like Ellis, where she would say, stop, stop, mom, stop. She'd throw things at me. (laughs) But I think, well, you have a choice. I can wake you up with like a a cup of ice water, like tush, or I could wake you up a jerk. I'm so tired of coming in here to wake you up, or I can make it funny yeah, and make it light so that you're not, you know, damaged and in therapy and of course she'll be damaged in therapy yeah, because yeah. i sang to her but regardless but i try to make it fun yeah i've been doing this literally since she was like maybe four <laughs> okay. so let's uh let's see this is leanne waking up her daughter isla and georgia is next to you she's the 16 year old yeah 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 so yeah. okay here we go Dreaming. 
It's the Star Spangled Banner. I know. Oh, <laughs> Go say Star Spangled Banner <laughs> Nothing from her. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. So at this point, it became a pissing match, right? Where she's yeah. not getting up. Yeah. So I sang like Yankee Doodle. I sang, I, I sang for a full like 15 or 20 minutes. And she still. Still didn't get up. That is resilience. It's fucking something. Something else. It's stubborn. Yeah, it's good for stubborn. her. <laughs> Man. But I tell you, like, I, I, I think it's, I think what's endearing is that you even put the effort into being creative to wake her up. Like, I think that. You know what I mean? Like our parents probably didn't even give a shit to be like, let's make it fun. Let's try to have a good day. You know, one of, <laughs> this is one of the things my mom did to me. Uh, not, she, you know, my mom has a lot of great qualities and she would wake me up by singing goofy songs. Aww. And I hated it when I was a kid, but I think now that was actually really awesome. Yeah. So, and now I think back and go, that's one of the moments where I got to see her be goofy. And be fun. And, and be fun. Like, and be yeah. funny. Um, because I think she figured out that being mean doesn't do anything no. in the morning, but set everybody's day off on the wrong foot. So that's kind of the way I've taken it too, is I'm like, well, if I get mean with her, then I'm in a bad mood. I know it so sucks. And it then does. you're in that grumbly, like, <sighs> and then you're drinking by five. Cause, you're <laughs> sl- cause the, the, I start my days light and I'm like, Hey guys, let's go. It bounces right off of me. Your nose and your fucking shitty attitudes. And then by five, I'm like, all right, okay. <sighs> and I'm worn down. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's true. It is It is easier. It is easier. It's easier it's for like you. Fun. I mean, the whole thing about parenting is you have to make it work for you, right? Yeah, man. It's got to work for you. I mean, not that you, not to the complete disregard of the person you're parenting, but at the same time, like homeschooling Isla, I can't just go on her schedule. Are you kidding? I'd be 7 p.m. doing three hours of work. That's fucking nutty, dude. So I can't do that. Why, that, why does her class start so late? Why is it at 11? I don't know. Why don't they fucking start school at 7 a.m. like they normally do and keep these kids on track? I have one teacher. She has one teacher who teaches an 8 a.m. class on Friday. Yeah. The other teachers start at 11, 11.30. Oh, my God. One, te- one class is at 1.30. Oh, my God. What so, are they doing to these kids? Yeah. But think about this. I was just thinking that, I mean, I used to hate waking up for school as mm-hmm. a teenager. Remember waking up? How the fuck? They, why would they even start school? I remember, like, what time does that school start? Eight. Eight. Mm-hmm. Well, I was at like 7.45 when mm-hmm. I was going there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is torture. Like, your little brain isn't even... Who can think that clearly to be in a class by 8 a.m.? It's pretty... It's, yeah. It's, it's nutty. gnarly, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think it's against their natural biological rhythm. Yeah. I mean, I actually read a book that said that in the book, that, that their biology shifts, and that's why they want to stay up later at night, because they their biology is wanting them to stay up later and sleep more in the daytime Mm. and then our society has set it up where they're you know george is on a bus by quarter to seven to get to (laughs) school by quarter to eight torture and so she doesn't get to stay up late so now they've been staying up really late and sleeping till like i mean george is staying up till midnight and sleeping till nine right which Um, is now completely screwing up I mean, once they do go back to school. Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's like, dude, keep the kid, then keep the kids on the same fucking schedule. Yeah. What does it hurt to start an hour later? I don't know. Start at nine and get out at four? Yeah, okay. That's I'd be fine. cool with that. Oh, my God. But we should be teaching. Tell me about it. No, we shouldn't. I've no. been teaching for weeks and uh, I, suck <laughs> at it. I suck big time. Uh, Bert's even worse. He was like, I was like, I'm so tired of teaching history. I hate history. There was yeah. never a point in my career as a student where I was like, ooh, history. Never. Yeah. And I, the t- history teacher is like, read 30 pages in the textbook and then write an essay. Isla can't read 30 pages in a textbook and remember, it would take her the entire day mm. because she's dyslexic. So I read 30 pages to her oh, and then help her write an essay. And one day I was like, I can't do it anymore. And Bert was like, I'll take over. I'll be the history teacher. What's the subject? And I was like, um, the Declaration of Independence. Oh, cool. So We're going to watch a 10 minute YouTube documentary and yeah. write an essay. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, dude. There's a test, and he pulls shit directly out of the out of the textbook. So she still has to read the book. He's like, oh, you can do that. I said, so now you've just <sighs> added 10 more minutes to her day. Oh, my God. He was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll 
yeah, I think I'm going to go work out. And just, oh, <laughs> thanks, Dad. <laughs> so yeah. Bad. Yeah. Fucking useless, right? Useless. Yeah. Tits on a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a Southern saying? Oh, yeah. Tits, Tits on a bowl. Tits on a bowl. Oh, on a bowl. On a bowl. I thought you said a useless. bowl. A bowl like you would eat out of. I'm like, yeah, why would somebody <laughs> put tits on a bowl? That is stupid. On a bowl. A bowl. A yeah, bowl. that is stupid. Tits on a bowl. Useless. Huh. Uh, that's fucking interesting. <laughs> but maybe that bull would be non-binary. Non-binary. Transgender. Trans mask. They're not. What is trans mask? Trans masculine. Trans masculine. masculine. I was like, mask. What does that it's, mean? Man, I don't fucking know. All right. Uh, the clip of you making Dr. Drew laugh on Instagram is one of my favorite things ever. Aww. He looks like his head is going to explode. I love your relationship with him. So do I. How did you get to be friends with him? <laughs> I know. I love him so much. He's I, so great. I'm telling you. So basically. But the two happened? of you together are really fun to watch I, and adorable. Aww, and really thank great. you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think he and I are we, we're similar in certain ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really, admi I've always admired him because I grew up listening to him. And then my special Mother Inferior came out and I was doing Adam Carolla's podcast to, to promote. And I ran into Dr. Drew there. And he's <laughs> like, Mother Inferior, I love your special. I'm a big fan. <sighs> and then I was like, oh my God, Dr. Drew knows who I am. And I was like, really? I like you. Let's, you know, let's start. So we started a, whatever, I did his podcast and that's how we kind of roped him into our world yeah. slowly and yeah he's just such a great human he is a lot of admiration for him i think he really cares about people i think he does and i think it's really great to see him um be a human being yeah you know we don't really see medical doctors as just people you yeah. know you see them in the context of your medical you know physician so to see that he's a real person who's a yeah. dad and a husband and a friend is really cool. Yeah, thanks, man. And he's a solid citizen. I'll tell him you said that. that he you, is that a solid like citizen. That. He really is, dude. He's like one of the very few, um, you know, he's a patriot. He's mm -hmm. like a good dude. He's a fucking solid yeah, dude. Yeah, he's very into civic duty. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that shit. I'm into it. I'm into it. Okay, so let's do some follow-up. Thank you for saying that. It was uh -huh. really nice Yeah, I do. loved watching the two of you together. You're sweet. Okay, follow-up from... Uh, where my mom's at episode 48 I, I was bringing up things that my mother would tell me that were nutty and and she would fixate on and one of those things was she wouldn't allow me to have uh, raw fish sushi in the summertime because there are worms in the fish oh. you must not eat sushi in the summertime very oh. hot well this person said um i'm here to let you know that your mom was right about the fish <laughs> what oh no mom's always right i live in a town about five minutes from the beach in central new jersey my local fire department hosts a fireman's fair at the end of every summer when i was younger i would volunteer to prep the food for the nightly seafood dinner i remember breading the fish that was just delivered and yes there were worms in the fish huh tiny little white worms that would be in the fillets they weren't buying cheap seafood either it came from a pretty respected seafood monger i remember making comments about it but it didn't seem to bother the people who were running the kitchen yeah so there you go well here's the deal man i remember i watched a documentary on sushi and i believe that they freeze sushi grade fish it's frozen in japan or wherever and then it's shipped over frozen therefore bypassing the whole worm thing mm. then again i read kitchen confidential by the late great anthony bourdain mm -hmm. and in that book he writes a beware of mussels only eat mussels in really high rent establishments because those mussels they get delivered in a bucket and mm. they just sit in a bucket uh, of that water uh -huh. for a very long time mm. so make sure you're eating at a reputable place because the mussels they open when they're steamed so mm -hmm. never pry open right. a mussel you know that one he said swordfish at the anthony bourdain swordfish is very wormy he Ugh. said never order swordfish it is the wormiest grossest seafood um, and chicken is filthier than you think. Everybody thinks that chicken is the safe option on the menu. Not true, because chicken is the most mishandled food in the kitchen. In, yes. In prep well, kitchens. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, a little worms, a little extra protein. That's what I think. And I tell you, knock on wood, I sushi's never gotten me down. Oh, fuck. And here's another person. Sushi parasites increased 283-fold in the past 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break it to you. But your batshit crazy mom was right. There are worms in sushi. 
A chef friend told me about plucking them from fish with Grrr. tweezers. No, 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 no. I believe they are killed if the fish is frozen uh-huh. to very cold temperatures. But Keep then what happens it. to them? They don't fall out of the fish. I don't fucking know. So they're frozen in the fish? I don't want to know that. I really like sushi. <laughs> I do too, and I eat it a lot. Fuck. But here's this. It says, a new study finds dramatic increases in the abundance of a worm that can be transmitted to humans who eat raw or undercooked seafood. It's 283-fold increase in abundance since the 1970s could have implications for the health of humans and marine mammals, which both can inadvertently eat the worm. Salmon. Well, thank how ironic. This person's name is Salmon. S-A-L-M-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Salmon. That can't be. <sighs> I eat a lot of, of sushi, but I eat it. Yeah. I try to get it from the fancy places. Yeah, yeah. Fancy places better. Fuck. Yeah, they can't all have worms. I mean, you know that you could cut. Where would they? What? Are they microscopic? Probably. Mm. Well, then that means that all the Japanese people are walking around with parasites in them. And mm. the, 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 you never hear stories about that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And everybody eats the worm at spring break. What's the big deal? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. Oh, thank you for Googling worms in the fish. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what, though? I just think it's, isn't that normal that there are worms in every living organism? We have worms probably inside of us. I think that's just how it goes, guys. There's worms on everything. You just, your body can probably process a lot of them. Fuck, I don't know. Hey, are you a doctor listening to this show? Let me know. Are there worms in the food? Are we eating them? Are we getting parasites? Does it matter? Or do people just walk around with worms in their body? I you ever had so. worms? No, did you? Oh, yeah, I had worms when I was a kid. I'd, what are you talking about? I had pen worms. Is that in your butt? Mm hmm. Shut the front door. I How did. do you get that? Um, I think it's from sitting in the dirt. Oh. Um, and I was like, I'd play, you know, outside and sit on the ground and in the dirt. And yeah. I think it's from that. But Oof. I remember it. They're very itchy. <laughs> uh, itchy buttholes. I remember and, having an itchy And butthole. how do you get them? Do you have to put, like, I think medicine? I just took, yeah, I took medicine in turn, like, swallowed some medicine. Yeah. Oh, God. I remember it, though. I was very small. Uh, I think thanks, parents, off. I don't want to read about it. I got person, it. How's it say? I, I can't read that far. It says, Is it how they, pinworms are spread when an infected person, most often child, has scratched his or her bare anal area. And the eggs get under your fingernails. Pinworm eggs can be transferred from to the fingers from clothing or bedding and then spread around the home. Yeah, I mean, look, kids, th- this is why God, part of me wants to just treat this pandemic the way kid stuff is handled. Like everyone just spit in each other's mouth and then we all get it. And then <laughs> that old herd, <laughs> that herd immunity. Yeah, kids just get everything nasty. There's no, I'm telling you, the once the kids go back to school, everyone's going to get the fucking Rona, right? That's, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a medical doctor. Thank God. I personally listen to Dr. Drew. I do too. I, I think uh, he knows what he's talking about. He does. And I think that, uh, yeah, he's a smart dude. He's Very. a smart dude. Okay. One voicemail follow up. What is it, Nadal? Let's play it. I'm listening to the newest episode and, uh, with Chris's mom singing to him every morning, I have a very, very similar thing. My, I grew up in a Christian household. My mom would sing this Christian song to me and my siblings every morning. She would start singing, Arise, my love, arise, my love. The grave no longer has a hold on you. I love and it. I fucking hate oh. that song yeah but it's good memories and i still piss my kids off with it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> pay it forward there you go <laughs> christian songs are very catchy did you sing a lot of christian songs growing up no uh i didn't sing them but i definitely <laughs> heard them in church every sunday and it's so funny you talking about christian songs like two weeks ago i sat down with Isla and Georgia and showed them a Southern Baptist sermon, which is what I grew up listening to. Oh, my life. And then, um, and then the singing, you know, because in my church there was only a piano and voices. There was no other instrument. And um, I didn't realize how much both the sermons and the songs uh, kind of shaped how I feel about spirituality. Yes. I don't believe in that religion. There was... There, 
parts of that religion I didn't agree with, but I pulled out of that stuff a lot of really meaningful, powerful stuff. It made me feel really guilty for not bringing my kids up in a religion. Oh, wow. It made me feel really bad. Like I have denied them the choice of saying, I, I don't want to go to Southern Baptist Church, but these pieces of that are meaningful. So I downloaded a ton of old Southern hymns and started listening to him in the car. And I was like, wow, I forgot how much these, or I, maybe I never even realized how much they meant to me. You just like the words and the music yeah. was meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up, I went to a Lutheran school for elementary school. Mm -hmm. And they, they're, Lutherans are like um, Christianity light. Mm. They're very, it was fun. Like the pastor could be married and, you know. And there was, um, the, you know, was that song? hide it under a bushel no i'm gonna let it shine oh this, this little, little light of mine. mine i'm gonna let it shine let it shine let, let it shine, shine let, let it, it shine that's a happy yeah. one yes yeah, very light. yeah and then okay. uh father abraham had many sons you know that one? Mm -hmm. many sons had father Abraham. it's all stupid too some of it was but that's dumb. from when you were young yeah right yeah, yeah. but i like them you know you, yeah they stick with you isn't they that do. interesting all that formative mm -hmm. stuff well, it's a good thing I play the Ramones and the Clash around the house. So my <laughs> children are going to grow up with like punk rock anthems and yeah, nothing spiritual in my house either. I know now I feel bad, but um, I feel really bad after yeah. watching that because, you know, Southern Baptist man, there is hellfire, brimstone, sweat. When you, the preacher starts taking his coat off and loosening his tie and gets down, man. It's mm -hmm. passionate. And I thought, I mean, I don't know that it even exists in Southern California, but there's a lot to be drawn from someone who's so moved by their belief. Yes. You know. Well, you know, uh, the great Sam Kinison, I believe, mm -hmm. was, was a Southern Baptist that's preacher. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So he got his cadence and delivery mm -hmm. from that. That's what my preaching, that's what my preacher looked like. Yeah. Same as Sam Kinison, except he wasn't going, oh, oh, boobies. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pussy. Bitch. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. a bitch. I hate you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Bill Hicks, too, had that Southern. He was very Southern. Yeah. Yeah that's cool that's fucking cool yeah there's good to everything you know if you can pull the good mm -hmm. out of the shit that scared you even as a kid mm -hmm. you're like well it's, it's not all bad like you were saying your mom i'm had some good in her where she mm -hmm. was singing i'm able to see the good stuff to my mom now lately mm -hmm. especially this last mother's day i actually for a minute for a fucking split second was like oh i kind of miss my mom Oh. And then I was like, no, no, I don't. I never, mind, never, mind. Never, mind, never mind. She's dead. Thank God. She's <laughs> in the closet next to my dead dog's ashes. <laughs> but, at, least uh, at least it's organized. No, it's fine. She's <laughs> fine. But, uh, but yeah, you start to think of the good stuff. You always got to take the good. Yeah. How many of us are doing our own hair at home right now? That's right. And what are, what are your options? Are you going to go to the pharmacy and just pull a box of dye off the shelf, hoping, just praying that you're going to look like the woman on the box? Because we all know it doesn't go down that way. That's why I love Madison Reed. Madison Reed, you get gorgeous, professional hair color delivered to your door, starting at $22, which is incredible. Uh, Madison Reed, what they do is they customize it. So you go to their website, you take a quiz, you tell them what you're looking for. Maybe it's to cover grays. Maybe it's to, I don't know, give a shine or a glow, whatever to your hair. And they customize your color. They mix it just right. They give nuances of light, dark, cool, and warm tones to create over 55 gorgeous multi-dimensional shades. This is not your average um, you know, box of hair dye that you're going to go get at the pharmacy. It is perfect. Find your perfect shade at madison-reed.com. And where my mom's at, listeners, get 10% off plus free shipping on their first color kit with code WMMA. That's code WMMA. That's madison-reed.com. There's no need to look terrible during these times. Do it fancy, Madison Reed. Father's Day is just around the corner. So give dad the gift he really wants this year. Perfectly aged, tender steaks. That's right. Omaha Steaks will deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of other favorites directly to your dad's door. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering my listeners access to a variety of amazing packages that are perfect to send to dad for Father's Day. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code MOM in the search bar and you'll see all the great options available. 
many that include free shipping and a free one pound package of their perfectly cured, incredibly thick applewood smoked steak cut bacon. Yum, yum. And also it's not just steaks that Omaha Steaks does. They do, well, first of all, let me tell you about the steaks. Naturally aged at least 21 days for tenderness and hand carved to perfection. They also do burgers and I love their Franks. Fantastic. Sausages, other favorites, poultry, pork. Uh, yeah, they're cut by Omaha Steak Butchers, individually sealed for freshness and for flavor. Uh, Omaha Steaks, it's a fifth generation family owned company with over 100 years of expertise. So there you go. Make Father's Day simple this year and send dad the gift he really wants. Perfectly aged Omaha Steaks and get free shipping and free steak cut bacon with select packages. Visit omahasteaks.com and type mom into the search bar to shop for Father's Day today. So let's do a, a question. Um, this is what would Christina P do? Oh, you got huh. mom questions? CP's got mom answers. <laughs> what would Christina P do? And Leanne K. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me see. Secondly, okay, my husband and I are planning our second baby and are going to start trying in a couple months. I would really love to hear your advice on having two babies. I'm sorry, on having babies two years apart. I firmly believe in that first six months to year are the worst, but I don't want to deprive my daughter of having a sibling she can relate to. I love hearing your stories about your boys getting along and being fun, but how did you get through that first year? How do you keep the baby from messing up your older baby's sleep schedule? Thank you for the service, Cassie. Any thoughts, Miss mm -hmm. Leanne Kreischer? It was really hard. Yeah. No, no, no joke. It was really hard. <laughs> you know. I mean, I didn't have a nanny. Um, I don't know how you did that. So um, it was exhausting. Like, because, you know, a baby sleeps so often and a toddler sleeps less often. And inevitably, someone was asleep at all times in my house. Yeah. So... It was very difficult, and I tried to keep, I just tried to keep Georgia, my oldest, I tried to keep her schedule as ironclad as I could, because I felt like, uh, why should she be totally disrupted for this new person that's coming in? It didn't always work, but that was my intention, was to try and keep Georgia's life as normal as I could, and have the baby adjust into that yeah. as much as I could, but you know, some of that is just not possible. Yeah. So, but I think if you set an intention, then, then at least you know that you're striving for that and not just go, well, everything's out the window. I have no idea what this looks like. If you can say, well, I have my daughter's schedule. I know what that looks like. So how can I work around Georgia's schedule as best I can? I remember being frustrated that I could never leave the house yeah, because so. someone was always asleep. Yeah, for, I know. I'm, I'm in it and I'm just... Our two-year-old still naps like three hours a day. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Another, I'm like, oh, I've been in nap time for the last four years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're just trapped. Like you are. You have to surrender to you do. it. Mm -hmm. Like just okay. It's real its talk. own quarantine. <laughs> yeah, that's why when people are like, I can't leave the house. I'm like, oh, bitch, I haven't left in fucking four years. Uh, no, it's right? not that big of a deal now. I'm used to it. So I'm gonna tell you the god. Oh, hold on, I gotta cross my legs because I look fat. When crossing them the god awful truth is and i'm gonna tell you is that you're right the first year is hell and i remember i had the good fortune of a college friend telling me um she goes listen you're gonna have that baby that second baby and there will be moments where you think to yourself what have i done yeah yeah what the fuck did i do i was out of the woods and then i went back into the dark forest for round two you're crazy to do this <sighs> So just know that like buyer's remorse is totally normal. Mm -hmm. Expect to have buyer's remorse in that first year, but obviously it goes back and forth. It's not always bad and it's not always great. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the emotional part of it is that it is fucking hell. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Toddler and newborn was probably the hardest. I think that's why I got such bad postpartum depression the second time because mm. I was like, there's no, it's relentless. It's relentless. There's so you no have, break. There's no break. You mm -hmm. have a toddler. So you put down the baby for the nap and that's when they tell the new mom, you nap when the baby naps. Bullshit. Now you've got a toddler who will fuck up your house while you're putting yes. down the baby. And they deserve your attention. They've yes. had your full focused attention for two years. Yeah, and now all of it. a sudden 
They get nothing? Well, that's not okay. It's not okay. And you can't explain that to a two-year-old. You have to go, okay, instead of relaxing or cleaning my house or prepping lunch, you sit down and read a book or play with cars or build blocks or whatever it is that two-year-old wants to do because they deserve your attention too. It's really freaking hard. It is. That first year is awful. It's I felt awful. the whole time I was failing my oldest daughter. Me too. I felt really guilty with Ellis. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he's not getting as much mom and mm-hmm. I miss him. I was actually, I remember crying on my therapist's couch because I missed my older son mm-hmm. so much, especially that last month of pregnancy when you're just so tired and you're about to give birth. And like, I couldn't do as much with LJ. I couldn't take him to the park because I was fucking, a, I was a huge whale. Mm-hmm. So dad steps in. So so that's another thing too, is like the last, you know, when you're super preggers with your second baby, your husband or whoever, your partner will step in more with the older one, I think, is you're more and more preggers. And then the maintain a more dominant role in the older kid's life for a little while at least that's what happened in our house and then um scheduling is is paramount and i i stand by that a hundred percent i believe in sleep training Mm -hmm. i don't uh, co-sleep beyond the first three months with my babies because it just puts order in our home it's worked for us Mm -hmm. and if you for us too yeah and if you can get them in separate bedrooms i think that's really going to help that older kid maintain because i don't know how it works if you have a newborn in the same room as the the two-year-old then that's right the two-year-old can sleep through it did you guys share uh, how did you guys do it no isla uh, the, our youngest stayed in our bedroom in a crib mm-hmm. um i've never co-slept with my kids ever not even from birth um i just wasn't gonna do that i'm alone so much i needed <laughs> i needed, needed i needed space. a moment where i was like okay here's the separation yeah. and now i get to be a human oh. without a person attached to me yeah so isla's crib stayed in our room until she was 18 months old okay and then she moved into um, the room with Georgia. So she was able, yeah. So then by 18 months, they're sleeping clearly through the night. Yeah, a she's lot sleeping through the night. Better yeah. so the two kids can be. So that's a good solution if you don't have two bedrooms to devote to two children. You can have the baby in your room. But then that messes with your marital times, no? Ugh. Didn't mess with mine. <laughs> <laughs> You can be quiet and uh, the baby doesn't wake up if you're quiet. Yeah. Or there's the couch or there's the side of the tub. Or the shower. You can get creative. Yeah. You know, if you're motivated, you can get creative. Yeah. And do that. We we spend a lot of time making out on the couch. Great. You know, because everybody, most people have a living room. Yeah. You You know. Get away to the living room and do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Sleep training, sleep training, sleep training. I can't recommend that enough. And also, I mean, look, man, I don't know. How how long did you last breastfeeding? 12 months. You did good. Both times. Good for you, girl. I tapped out at like five months on the second one, I think four months on the first. Um, The sooner you can do formula at night, I think is great to give mom a break so Mm -hmm. that you can sleep. Mm -hmm. you're going to need more rest. And by the way, you're going to need a lot more help with two children, with a newborn and the toddler. Enlist the help of anybody and everybody you trust, I would say. If you have a mom, great. If you have an aunt, great. You're going to need it. And you know, even if you have another mom in your same position who has two kids around the same age, you can tag team. Yeah. You know, um, we couldn't have, we we weren't able to afford a nanny until my kids were older and I had to go back to work full time and I had no real option. So I would, uh, I would suggest finding someone else who has kids around your same age and you know, spending time together because then, it, you know, inevitably one newborn is asleep. So there's at least two adults there to take care of the, yeah. you know, two adults can handle two two-year-olds, no problem. Yeah. And have one adult deal with a, an infant yeah, or lunch or whatever, you know, two adults tag teaming any number of kids is always better than just one. Yeah. A two adults is always the key. <laughs> better than just one, man. One adult is so hard. I just started like, going, they're all it. over me. They're all over me. I just need, I need a minute. <laughs> oh my God. And Julian, he's almost two now. And it's just, mommy, I want up. I want up mm. all day. Like he wants to be in my arms, which mm. is adorable because I know I miss that time. That time goes and you never get that back. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you I do just get it back though sometimes. Just- yeah. Uh, Isla Kreischer is in my lap a lot lately at 13. Oh. But I know what happens in toddler repeats itself in adolescence. The oh, same boy. kind of neediness, um, willfulness, temper, any of that stuff that's happening. Uh, and all kids have it in different degrees as a toddler repeats itself when they go into puberty. Mm. So because the brain development is doing the same thing in puberty that it did when they're a toddler. 
Right. And so. it's also separating from mom mm-hmm. and needing mom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. simultaneously. Yes. Which is quite a dance. It's a fight for autonomy when they, on some level, know they can't be autonomous. Yeah. But they want it, but they're not capable of it. And that makes them angry. Yeah. It makes them frustrated and angry. That's true for both stages. Yeah. Is they don't want your help, but they can't do without you. No. So it's hard. It it's is a, a hard stage. real internal struggle. No shit, man. Mm. No shit. Okay. Oh, we have a voicemail. Let's do let's do that one. Hi, mommy. <laughs> I look forward to each Monday just because your episodes drop. I'm calling from Minnesota. Recently married, 29 years old, and we just moved into our first house. But we've been living together for five years. I've always wanted kids, but now that we're in that prime position to do so, the more hesitant I become. Uh, The biggest influence might be to make my parents Nana and Pop Pop. And most of our friends are a little bit older. Uh, Some of them have their own kids of their own now, but we aren't out of the the party phase uh, within that same group of friends yet. Um, Do you have any advice on making the decision to go for it? And how to deal with the question, so when are you going to get pregnant? Keep those jeans high and tight. Bye. How old was she? Do you remember? 29. Oh, gosh. Well, what do you think, Leanne? Any thoughts? Well, she's got several years. I mean, I didn't have my first baby till I was almost 34. Yeah. But um, I also partied with babies. So it doesn't mean <laughs> that you have to not party. I mean, obviously, the early, early, early years is really hard. Mm. But... That doesn't all necessarily have to stop. I don't think you should have a baby for anybody else. No. For Nana and Pop Pop. No, that's no. not the reason to have a baby. No. Um, it changes everything, you know, really. And most of it for the better, but some of it not. Mm-hmm. So you have to be really ready to let go of your what you know reality to be so that yeah. you can embrace what's coming, which is mostly good. But some of it sucks. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard. Very hard. And especially, this is going to sound so stupid, but (laughs) when I look at Kylie Jenner on the gram, and I'm like, God, she's so so young and she's so beautiful and she's killing it in her career. And she had a baby very young Mm -hmm. as well. And I'm like, that must be really hard for her to give up that youthful freedom. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know what her deal is really in real life. But I'm just saying to be so young And to have a child must be impossible because, Mm -hmm. you know, you're still a kid yourself. 29 is really, 28 is when you become an adult, I Mm. would say. I think you're right. Yeah. The brain is formed and you're like a person and you're just beginning adulthood. And then, you know, you shut it down with a kid. You really do go on lockdown when you have kids in the very, look, my kids are two and four. And... It is now easier to take them out and do stuff. I'd say two and four, you can resume partying a little. What do you think? Yeah, that's right. Is that when you started to party a little bit? Well, two, a little older than two. Yeah, three, four. Yeah, something like that. Four is when they're like kids. Yeah, four and six, we were definitely being very social. Fun. Yeah, super fun. And they can be, they're a lot more self-sufficient. You can hand them a cup of goldfish and they're not going to choke on it. You know, uh, when they're a little younger, you have to really watch them with simple like I don't know keeping them alive yeah but fuck it's exhausting I don't know I I think the question to ask is what do you what does life look like without kids like because life is long you know let's plan on living to be at least 95 great and if you're 29 you have 65 years of what will you fill that with and if the answer is things that don't have children in them and that's what you really want then why have kids or do Mm. you say you know what five more years of what we're doing here and then I'd like something different that includes kids and a different kind of purpose maybe maybe that's the question to ask if if you if she's 29 she's got a a good like six years at least yeah fertility at least six years of it and six years is a long time it is so two years from now you may start going you know I could see kids. Yeah. There's no rush for her. There's yeah. no rush. So I don't know. I think it's an interesting question. I had some friends who um, were trying to get pregnant, but very kind of haphazardly, not sure they really wanted to get pregnant. And it, they said to, to me, you know, if I look into my future and I don't see kids, I'm actually okay. 
Oh, so I'm that's okay a with different, that. that that's, and that's the point. That's the point. I agree. When you go, at least for me, there was a switch that went off that I could not turn back. Exactly. The switch hit, was hit, I think around, it was my 35th birthday that when we started trying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, boop, I want a baby and I want that fucking baby now. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. It's like a biological thing. Right. That happened for me. However, I wouldn't recommend starting your fertility journey at 35 because that is the age that you're, egg uh, quality starts declining significantly so look man don't wait until 35 to start your fertility journey if you real here's what i always tell people on this show go to the doctor go get your fertility levels checked they do some blood work they can do an ultrasound they can see the eggs in your ovaries they can tell you where you're at and they wow. can actually tell you yeah hey you've got you know here's where you're at in your fertility you may want to start thinking about making babies now mm -hmm. you may you can you've got a couple years you've got so science is on our side now and that means hey you could even take your eggs out put them on ice mm -hmm. hey now and you can put them in in your 40s and now you don't even have to worry about getting pregnant later because you've got those nice fresh embryo you know mm -hmm. freshies from when you were 29 and you can work on your career and da 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 and then you can have kids older when you have more resources which is great too you know, there's good and bad to everything. Totally. But I think that in, that biological thing switches, at least for me, where I was like, it is time to reproduce. I want a baby now. That happened with my second one. The first one, you know, I got pregnant on the pill. So I wasn't <laughs> really trying to get pregnant. I didn't ever really think I'd have kids, not because I didn't want them, but I just didn't, I didn't see that path in front of I me. Didn't I didn't I just either. didn't see it. I didn't either. So when I had Georgia, I was like, well, she's not going to be by herself. Yeah. But I had a need for her to have a sibling. So at a certain point, I was like, okay, it's time to do this again. Yeah. Let's have another one. And it was very clear. That was, it actually wasn't even really a thought. Same. Yeah. I had Ellis and I went, I, I need another one. Yeah. I can't do this to have, I was an only child and Same. I personally, yeah, both of us mm -hmm. were, but we also didn't have great parenting mm -hmm. stuff going on. I think it was very hard and I didn't want my, I, and I'm an older mom. So I'm like, I'm going to, you know what I mean? Like, he needs his, he needed somebody else besides mom and dad anyway mm -hmm. well i hope that helps uh, guys also thank you for submitting these pms recipes i really appreciate that i'm not going to bore you with the details but apparently bananas oats and chocolate chips work wonders for what do you really? do when you have pms and you're dieting i don't have it oh. i've always been i've always had really light period no pms i'm not i have a headache you're i get so headaches lucky. that's it i eat the world do you oh Oh, so no, 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 you think about it. Every once in a while, I'll crave chocolate. It's snacky. But I'm not bad. It's never been bad for me. You're lucky. I'm right. lame. You have anything else? To, uh, do you want to add me? I don't think so. I think I love you. I love you too. And I even love your Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your Etsy sweatshirt. Okay. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, thank you so much for joining Leanne. And if you want to hear more of Leanne Kreischer, listen to her podcast, Wife of the Party. Um, you can find that everywhere, I'm yeah, assuming. Everywhere. Yeah. YouTube, wherever. Everywhere. And until next time, um, stay cool, mom. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at. Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's at.